testing a reduced pressure zone back off the vector device. The first thing that we're going to do is going to test the first check valve for tightness and measure the differential pressure across that first check valve. Then I'm going to test the tightness of the second check valve under a back pressure situation. We're going to test for no flow. The test is exactly the same as on a double check valve. We're going to test the relief valve to see when it opens. And we're going to test the differential pressure of that second check valve as well. Here's our formula. We have the formula, small t, 5, t, t, 2, 1. Small t, first check valve is going to be tightness step and differential pressure. Second check valve is going to back pressure for tightness. We're going to test the null flow. We're going to dump the relief valve to see when it opens. And we're going to test the differential pressure on the second check valve. I'll draw it up for you. Okay, the first thing we are going to do is to identify the device. We look for markings on the device, and it indicates to us that this is a reduced pressure zone back to prevention device. R, D, D. Next step is to determine the direction of flow. We look for the arrow. Next step is to number our test stops. Test stop number one. Two, three, and four. How do we know that's test stop number four? The arrow is pointing to it. Or test stop number one is located on the upstream side of the upstream shutoff valve. We need to install our adapters and flush. We install our adapters and flush by opening up test stop number four, open test stop number three, open test stop number two, open test stop number one, and then we close test stop number one, test stop number two, test stop number three, and test stop number four. Next step is to request permission to shut down. We shut down the downstream shutoff valve. How do we know there's a downstream shutoff valve? The arrow is pointing to the downstream shutoff valve. So we close that down. There's something that we have to do after we close down, and then we observe to see if there's any water coming out of the relief valve. If there's water coming out of the relief valve, that's telling us that the first check valve was leaking by. This is the small t. It's leaking by, water is getting into the zone, causing the relief valve to open. If no water is coming out of the relief valve, that's telling us that this first check valve is holding tight. It's a small T because it's not really a test. All we're doing is observing something when we close it down. That's why we have this small T. Okay, the next step is to orientate our test kit. Close the high, close the low, and open the vent. Take the vent hose, put that into a bucket. Measure differential pressure across the first check valve. We want to back pressure the second check valve. We want to test for no flow tightness. We want to dump water into the relief valve to see when it opens. And we want to take the differential pressure reading of the second check valve. So, first thing to do is take the differential pressure reading of the first check valve. To do so, we need to take the high hose and connect it to test stop number two. Open that up. Take the low holes connected to test stop number three. Open that up. Bleed our high, bleed our low, and we'll take our differential pressure reading. Our differential pressure reading should be five or greater. That's that step. So we've done the first check valve. The next step is to back pressure that second check valve. We need to get water from here to there. Take your vent holes, bleed out the air, by opening up the low control valve and then connect it to test stock number four. Open up test stock number four. That hasn't done anything yet, so now we need to introduce water. We need to get this high side water from here over to there. So to do so, we open up the high control valve. As soon as we open up the high control valve, high side water will go from here up to here and down to there. What happens if I see my test kit needle starting to rise at this time? 
we have a back pressure situation. If this happens, you should close off the high control valve. You should have a back pressure situation. If water doesn't start to rise, we continue to uh, flow on this uh, condition. So we have our high control valve open, and we have our test stock number four open, test stock number two is open, test stock number three is open, and we are going to observe our relief valve. If no water is coming out of the relief valve, that's telling us that the second check valve is holding tight against back pressure. That's that test. It's now holding tight against back pressure. If, in fact, water starts coming out of that relief valve, that's telling us that that second check valve is failing under a back pressure condition. Our second check valve was saying that our second check valve was tight. There's no water coming out of the relief valve. The next step is to test for no flow. To test for no flow, we want to shut off the supply of water to our test kit to allow the high side of that test kit to sense what's going on downstream, if anything. So we close down test stock number two. Observe our test kit needle. If our test kit needle holds steady, that's telling us nothing is happening downstream. Does this tell us anything about the downstream shutoff valve? No. We don't know anything about that downstream shutoff valve. If we want to know anything about that downstream shutoff valve, what we would have to do at this point is to create a flow situation downstream. If we create a flow situation downstream and our needle still holds steady, then we can say that our downstream shutoff valve is tight. So I wouldn't recommend doing it now because there's something else we still have to do. So. We've done our no flow test. Now we have to do our uh, differential pressure relief valve test. So we have to see when that relief valve is going to open. In order to do so, first thing we need to do is create a supply of water. So go back to test stock number two and open it up. If we don't open up test stock number two, that means we don't have any water to put into test stock number three because that's what's going to allow us to open up the relief valve. So now we're all ready to go. We're ready to put water into test stock number three. If you look at your configuration or your manifold here, you can see that if I open up the low control valve, since everything else is open, water is going to go into test stock number three. Test stock number three is located on the downstream side of the relief valve and it will push it open. If I open up the low control valve, one quarter turn, this allows high pressure water to be introduced into test stock number three. It'll slowly be introduced into here. If this is 60 PSI, this is 55 PSI, because I had a five pound differential pressure reading. Since I'm introducing water into here slowly, this will rise to 56, 57, 58, and what do you think will happen at 58? Plus two, water will start to come out of the relief valve. It's a two pound spring. At the same time, this is all happening, our needle is gonna to start to drop down. The water should start coming out of the out of the relief valve before this reaches two. Or two or greater. That's how to test the relief valve. There's one more step. We have to test the differential pressure of the second check valve. To test the differential pressure of the second check valve, all this goes away. Remove your hoses or reorientate your test kit. We're all set, ready to go to measure differential pressure across the second check valve. Connect the high hose to three, the low hose to four. Open them up. Vent hoses in the bucket. Bleed the high, bleed the low. Take my reading. I should have a differential pressure of one or greater.
differential pressure of the septic check valve. Now that's going to tell me a couple things. One, it's going to tell me that that second check valve is okay if I have a differential pressure of one. That the spring is okay. But that differential pressure is zero. That tells me that two things. One, that the spring is bad. I have a broken spring. It's not in there at all. Or is something wrong with that spring. Because when I back pressured that second check valve, it was okay. Water did not come out of the relief valve, so it was okay. Or, I have a back pressure situation going on here. The downstream shutoff valve is not holding tight. And it's giving me a differential pressure being at zero. Because if this is 60, this was 55. And this should have been 54. But if I have a back pressure situation, the downstream shutoff valve is leaking by, we'll say this is 100 psi. My differential pressure reading is going to read zero. So what do I do in this situation? You take your pressure gauge and you put your pressure gauge on test dock number one and you disconnect this and you put your pressure gauge on test dock number four and if four is lower than test dock number one it's a bad spring and it's not a back pressure situation. If test dock number four reading the PSI is higher than the PSI here, that's telling us that you have a back pressure situation and your downstream shutoff valve is leaking by. Because this goes away and this is 100. So that's going to give you zero differential pressure. So there's a reason why we do not measure pressure first is because we're going to catch this when we measure the differential pressure of the second check valve. So if your needle stays positive, the one or, or greater, that's telling you that everything is okay, the test is over. If your needle drops to zero when you're measuring differential pressure reading, there's two possibilities. One is that the spring is bad, and two, or two, that you have a back pressure situation and the downstream shutoff valve is leaking by. In order to eliminate one of those possibilities, use your pressure gauge to eliminate one of those possibilities. You guys in the fire protection if you wanted to test that downstream shutoff valve for tightness, you would need to go through this process of connecting the high to two, open that up, the low to three, open that up, lead out. Get a differential pressure reading. Take your bed holes, bleed out the air, connect it to test dock number four, open that up. You can introduce water by opening up the high control valve. I'm going to introduce water to test dock number four. Again, open up the high control valve. Our high pressure water is over here. Close down test dock number two. And then go do something downstream. Open up your uh, main drain. A flow downstream, and once you create a flow downstream, if you observe no water is coming out of there, then you can be assured that that's closed tight. If water comes out of there and your needle drops out to zero during this time, that this is not holding. Okay. Again, this is not part of the test procedure, but it's a procedure for you to evaluate the condition of that downstream cutoff valve. Thank you.